We are looking at the GNU image manipulation program. And Thank just you. before, just Aww. during the break, we took this picture. And we're going to turn this into an amazing thumbnail for YouTube that is going to pop. Now, if you're not a YouTuber, it's okay. You're going to learn some really neat strategies today in order to do some editing in this free visual editor this photo editor called the GIMP, or GNU Image Manipulation Program. You can download it absolutely free for Windows, Mac, and Linux at GIMP.org. Let's get right into it. Okay, so one of the things that we need to do is we need to cut ourselves out of this picture. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this lasso marquee, which they call the free select tool, and I'm going to click a single point at the bottom of my arm here. And as I follow along, see it's a straight line, Henry? Yes. I can actually click on points and trace around my torso really, really easily. Now, if I mess up like that, I can actually move these lines. Perfecto. Okay. It's like a nice little pen tool that you can kind of like cut things out or something? Exactly. Oh, so we neat. actually want to be able to cut each of us out of this photo. Okay. So it's just a really, really quick job. I'm doing this really, really quickly on the air so that uh, this doesn't take up uh, all of our time, but you can take it as much time as you want to do this. And we're just going to get around here. Oh, oh bring, my goodness. Oh, no. Out. I don't want to have a little bit of a flat head there, so I'm just going to fix that. Don't you love that you can do that in the GNU image manipulation program? So, I mean, if I, I oh, I've done that oh, by no. accident, I can grab this point and bring it back in. Excellent. See that? I can go back to this point, bring it back in. So it's as easy as that. Going around me. Okay. Nice and easy. Brilliant, right? Okay. I got me. I'll just do that. Boom. Ooh. Hit enter. And now control C, control V. I've created a new floating selection. I'm going to right click and go layer to new layer. Now if I turn off that background layer, it's it just like Robbie. You. Yeah. So now I'm going to get the next guy. So Ooh. this is, the, Jeff is behind me, so I don't have to trace around my arm. I can just start anywhere in my arm okay. and trace around Jeff. Here we go. Nice face there, Jeff, by the way. Thank you. I said Beautiful. smile, and he's so happy. Yeah. Happy to be here. Make sure you get yeah. the curvature of the hair right. Oh, yes. Every it's so much hair. easier when you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> if you got spiky hair, you're going to have trouble with this. I could just use the round circle marquee, and it would do just fine. There we go. See how easy that one was? Enter. And now, back to the first layer. I don't want to copy on my layer. I want to mm -hmm. copy on the bottom layer. Control-C, Control-V, right-click, layer to new layer. Now, turn it off. That's what we have. Whoa. I can turn off Jeff. Oh! I can turn off me. Oh. We're two separate layers, okay? Selfie. Now, let's go over to Henry. See hey, how guys. quickly this can be done? Again, we're using the... Lasso marquee, aka free select, and we'll trace around Henry. Like a pro. Yeah. It's a good thing I got my hair cut. <laughs> now, as you're doing this, Yeti Wizard is asking in the chat room, wouldn't you want to use the feather to selection uh, to smooth the edges to the cut or something like that? If you wanted to get that precise, no, not in this case, because um, we're not that's not what we're doing. Okay. So what we're doing is we're creating a border. I'm going to show you how this works. All right. uh, I've got Henry, and I'm going to control C. Now, what, what uh, was being asked there is if I should feather it and give it a softer edge. No, I don't want that in this case. I want a hard edge on these photos. So now it looks like that. Okay. okay? Cool. There's Henry. Oh, no, I'm gone. Hey. There's Jeff. There's me. Okay, cool. see how quick and easy that is? So now I'm going to go to my layer, and I'm going to right-click on the layer. You're going to understand why I don't want a feather. I'm going to go alpha to selection, and now it's actually going to select me perfectly. Now I'm going to right-click, and I need to go layer, layer to image size. Okay, so that now, see how the orange box is around me? Yep. Yeah. If I go layer layer to image size, that orange box is now the image size. Oh, okay? Okay. <laughs> yep. So now, because I right-clicked on my layer and chose alpha to selection, I am perfectly bordered. Okay? So now I'm going to right-click and go select, grow, and let's try, uh, this is 5100 pixels wide, mm -hmm. so I'm going to try 30 pixels and hit enter. You're going to see that layer 
that selection grow around me. Okay. Okay. Mm. See that? So now I'm going to go one layer below me, which is the Jeff layer, and I'm going to right click and go new layer. I feel like this is some hierarchy of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I've created a new layer, which is absolutely blank, and I'm going to right. I'm going to actually first click on here, make sure that I've got white selected, mm -hmm. and right click and then fill with the white color. So now I've got this perfect border right around me. Okay. Whoa. See that? So if I turn off my layer. It actually looks like that. Oh, okay. But it's 30 pixels bigger than me. Okay. Right. Awesome outline. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to Jeff. I'm going to go alpha to selection, right click, layer, layer to image size, right click, select, grow, because I want to make that, uh, that border him. Mm -hmm. Okay. That selection. Now I'm going to go to Henry's layer, one layer below Jeff, create a new empty layer, right click, edit, fill. Okay. <laughs> See what's happening there? Now I'm going to go to Henry. Same thing. What am I going to do? Oh, what did I just do? I right clicked on something. <laughs> All right, Jeff, tell me what I'm going to do. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh, oh gosh. I was Jeff. looking at the chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to right click. I'm going to go alpha to selection. Then yes. what's next? I'm going to right click and I'm going to go layer, layer to image size. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to right click, select, grow. By 30. 30. Same for each guy. And then I'm going to go one layer below and I'm going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to fill my marquee with white. Excellent. Okay? So now you've seen it on YouTube. And we've got this perfect border around each of us. It's beautiful. Right within the image. See that? Okay. Now I'm going to blur that background a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the background layer. I'm going to go right click and go filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, you know what? I actually prefer the legacy blur feature. Oh, yeah? So Why filter, is that? blur. Uh, I think it's just a little. Um, it's the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the one that it's included, though. So let's let's increase the size of the blur. Let's see what that's going to do for my background. See how it's just kind of bringing the focus off of that. I don't want it to be too stark. I just want to bring us out of the photo a little bit. See that? Nice. There we go. Okay. Next step. So there, I've got a bit of a blur on that background. Next step, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go image canvas size. Now, what do we know about our thumbnails, we need to make sure that they are proportional 16 over 9. So mm. 1920 by 1080 is a traditional 1080p video um, dimension. Now, if we don't size our image correctly to 16 over 9, we're going to have black bars either on the top and bottom or the left and right Correct. of our thumbnail. Yeah. So because this is for YouTube, we're gonna, I'm going to actually just copy the width. So what I've done is I've gone image canvas size and copy the width. That's where I'm going to start. So just double click and control C. Now I'm going to go 1920, make a mental note of 2916. So 1080. Then I'm going to turn on this link between them and then repaste my width. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this is already 16 over 9. Oh, perfect. It is perfect. Excellent. Because the, it still remained with a height of 2916. So I don't need to rescale this at, at all or recrop the, uh, the canvas. Now, while you were doing that, yeah. Yeti Wizard uh, asked another question in okay. the chat room and wanting to know the significance of using the different sizes of the layers between the image size versus the selection size. And as I see it, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, if you went by the selection size, you wouldn't be able to then do the expansion of 30 pixels because the selection size is to what you cut. Whereas so we mean when we, cr when we change when you, you the layer the to the image size? That's right. So then okay. when you do the outside, then you have more to work with. Is that correct? Can I explain? So I've, says you're wrong. I've taken <laughs> no, not wrong. Just let me explain it in a in a real easy to understand way. So when I cut out me, okay, as yes. an example, or we cut out you. Mm -hmm. Now I copy you to the clipboard and paste. So now the layer ends right here. Right. So now if I grow mm -hmm. 30 pixels, it goes beyond the. It's going to go selection. beyond the no, not the selection. The the selection is going to go beyond the the border of the layer. Right. Okay. So now when I fill, it's going to get cut off 30 pixels above your head. Right. Yeah, because, because the, the white is an actual outside. Layer. You're outside of the layer. Right. right. Okay. So by making the layer okay. fill the entire canvas size, now we can then go beyond 30 pixels beyond the top, bottom, left, right edge of the layer of the image. That's what I meant. Okay. I just didn't say it that way. Mm. Mind blown. All right. So there we go, folks. There's our image for the thumbnail, but we need 
to have text. Okay. And there's... Mm. You've got text on your shirt. Yeah. Why isn't that sufficient? <laughs> so there's a way to yes. do this that YouTube just loves. Let's grab, let's try the impact font to start. So I've selected the text tool here, and then I've selected my font, and I'm going to scroll and see if we can find impact. Uh, let's see, it's a little hard to scroll. Can you not just hit I to go to, does it not work that way? Probably. No, I wouldn't. J, K, H, I. It's not in order? Yeah. yeah well, maybe <laughs> I don't have impact. What? Which is fine if I don't have the MST, because I'm on Linux, so if I don't have Microsoft fonts installed, mm -hmm. it's right. okay. Impact is one that is definitely going to work well for this, mm -hmm. but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text box. Uh, let's actually put this on a top layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. There we go. And let's just find a font that we like. Yeah, okay. There we go. Just create that like that. And let's call this episode 7 inch raspberry pi mm -hmm. screen. Just like that. Okay. So now it's this very, very little text. I'm going to make that a lot bigger. Let's try 200 point. That's a, or 200 picks. It's too, still too small. 500. A oh, little bit too extreme. big. Extreme. Yeah. 350? Well, I'll just kind of use the arrow here to go down. But now let's, uh, let's find a font that we like. So I'm actually going to go up to the top right here so that I can click on one font and then use my arrow key to move down. Nice. See that? Okay, so I kind of like that. That's sans serif bold italic. And then I'm going to just make it so that it all fits on one line. So I'm just going to go down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. Till we get there. Almost there. Honey, I shrunk the text. <laughs> Almost there. Uh, Come on, baby. I called 350. So I think it's going to be close. Think it's going to be oh, close. Oh, oh. We're at Buffer 375. Below. It's going to be different depending on the resolution of your image. Mm -hmm. So the numbers that we're using for the size oh. of the font. Oh, there oh, we go. God. 342. <laughs> so close, Jeff. Yeah. I'm within seven. But let's go down to, let's try 325 because we need a little bit of space on the edge. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to change that font to white. So there we go. And I'm going to position that just down here. <laughs> now here's where things get a little interesting. I'm going to, again, right-click on my font mm -hmm. and go alpha to selection. And this is cool because without rasterizing the font, I've created a selection of the font. Oh, okay. I'm not using like the magic wand selection tool right, or something yeah, yeah. silly like that. No, I'm actually selecting the alpha of the uh, of the the font so now I can right click and I can go select grow let's try 30 again and now one layer below right click and go new layer and this time we're gonna fill black our foreground color there we go so now it just pops right out so now on that black layer I can right click again and go filter light and shadow Let's use a legacy drop shadow. I'm going to turn off allow resizing because we don't want it to mess with our dimensions of the image. I'm going to turn off the offset and set my blur radius to 50 pixels and the opacity to, let's try, like 90. And then hit OK. And there we go. We've just got like a subtle kind of pop-out glow there. Nice. There you have it. So there's our thumbnail, folks. Very cool. All nice done. Easy all done through the GNU image manipulation program. And you might have cool. thought that putting a border around everybody was going to be a lot of work. Yeah. It's actually super That's simple. simple. There you go. You can take it one step further and you can say, you know what, I want to change the background. So you can turn off that background layer and pop us on uh, a different background. And Beach quite, in Hawaii. Well, quite... Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine by me. But quite, quite typically what folks will do is they'll grab two shades of the same color and create a new layer down here. And let's get it go OK, and then let's use a gradient, and we'll change this to uh, a radial shape. And let's grab it from my teeth over to here, you know, and do something like that. You've seen that kind of thing happening yes. as well. Cool. Yep. Uh, I can reverse that, so behind my head is the lighter of the two colors. There we go. Again, nice. you're the top layer, the glow is behind you. Exactly. I'm sensing a hierarchy here. 
<laughs> do you want me to put your arm in front of my arm? No, like maybe no, we'll no, just do not. some visual no, no, editing not, here. Get in the way. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so that's the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Check it out at GIMP.org. It's absolutely free, no matter what platform you're on. Go grab it. Very nice. Cool.